I saw this visual effect in the film Slumberland on Netflix, and I really wanted to recreate it. So I set to work to make something similar in Blender. So within this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the key elements of this. I'm not going to waste your time by showing you how to download and import and an animation and a, a model. And I'm not going to show you how to rig basic things like the butterflies and whatever. I'll brush over the, them roughly just so that you understand what it is I'm actually doing. But I'm not going to go into the specifics. Now, if you do want to learn about the specifics, then by all means, let me know in the comments and we can chat. We can maybe even look at making a separate tutorial for those particular elements. But for the scope of this tutorial, we're going to focus on the things that are important to making this visual effect. So to begin with, I have this character model and this is rigged. So as you can see, we have a nice little dance. So the duration of this entire animation is 1400 frames, but I'm going to cap it just to make things a little bit easier for me to demonstrate. Now, the other thing I've got is a load of butterflies. So we can see here, we've got three butterflies that are flapping the wings kind of slowly and three that are a little bit more energetic. Now I've grouped these into two separate collections. We've got the energetic butterflies and the docile butterflies. And it's important that we have these in two separate collections for later. So the first thing that we want to do is select our dancer and come over to the properties and add in a particle system. So when we play this, we can see all these balls spewing from the model. Great. So I'm going to be jumping up and down these settings here. So pay close attention because the first thing we want to change is the physics type. I'm going to change this from Newtonian to Boyd's and we want to change this max airspeed to something really slow, like 0.1 and we can minimize that just there so we don't need that no more so now we can see that these are all popping out from around the mesh in no particular order but again this is not what we're looking for because we need to change the render settings so we can see this render as halo and we can actually just change that to collection and under instance collection we want to use the docile butterflies so if we rewind this again we can see all these butterflies are popping up from out the mesh. So you probably notice though, on the starting frame and frame one, we only have two or three butterflies and they gradually increase over time. Again, that's not something that we want because your animation, let me just put a few butterflies on and let's just render this. That doesn't look anywhere near a person. And the way we can fix that is at the frame start. It starts at frame one with the animation but we can actually change this to something like negative 50, for example. And so then on frame one, it will start with a load of butterflies. So what we can do is we can increase the total amount of butterflies. So we'll increase that from 1000 to 10,000, for example. And we can see there there's plenty scattering over the surface. Now we can see there that the animation stops at frame 250. So what we need to do is we actually need to change this to the end of our animation. So I'm going to change that to 350. So I'm just going to stop it on the end of the animation and just render that just to see what that looks like so far. So we can see kind of a shape of a person it's starting to look a little bit more like what we want, but it's not quite right. So I think to begin with, let's increase the scale of these. Now, luckily we don't need to rebake anything. Okay. So I think these are looking at adequate size. There's a couple more things that we're going to need to tweak. So first things first, we can see here how the arms here and the majority of the butterflies are here. And essentially what's happening there is because the, because the butterflies are being emitted at a particular point, it's kind of leaving them behind as it emits them, you see. So what we can do there is we can decrease the lifetime to something like maybe 20. And then what happens is because these particles have a smaller lifetime, they stay a lot closer to the surface. And it's not because the individual particles are actually staying close to the surface. It's because the, it's because the particles are dying and being reborn closer to the surface. So it kind of looks like they're sticking more on the surface of the mesh, but this raises a problem, not a great problem, but you probably notice now that when we render this it's looking a lot less dense than it was previously. And that's because the particles they live over the lifetime of the animation. And so when they're shorter in duration, fewer of them are shown at once. 
So what that means is we need to increase these to maybe 30,000, for example. So if we render that, it's starting to look a little bit more full again. But it's not quite sufficient, I wouldn't have said. So let's double that, change it to 60,000. And I think that looks pretty much what we're looking for. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come down to the cache setting. And we're going to click on disk cache. And then keep saving your work as you go all the time. Save your work because things like particle systems are prone to crash in Blender. So control S literally every time you click something at this stage. So we'll do is we'll press bake. Now this will take a few minutes to actually bake, depending on your machine, how many, how many frames that you've got, so on and so forth. But just give it time. It'll get there eventually. So now that it's baked, it'll run a lot smoother. We can actually preview this pretty much in real time in, in the viewport. Let's take a render and see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Nice and dense. The great thing is once you've baked it, you don't need to worry about changing things too much because you can increase things like the scale of the particles without worrying about needing to rebake it because it doesn't actually affect that. I think they're looking a little bit big. They're more like rose petals right now, but that's just because of the color. I think I'm going to leave them this, this big for the minute. Right, so what we want to do next is we need to sort out the colors of these butterflies. So first things first, we need to come across to the shading editor. So we select one of our butterflies and then providing you have node wrangler installed, press control T and add a texture coordinate mapping and image texture. And then I'm using a butterfly texture, which I made myself. If I can find somewhere reasonable to host this where you can just download it for free, then you're welcome to, there'll be a link in the description. And then once we've plugged this into the base color, so if we come into UV editing, what we can do is just scale this up just a little bit and just put it in place just so that all these wings are on the edge fit nicely. Just move that if we need to, for example, there we go. So there wasn't much needed in this because I just did straightforward camera project. So now what we can do is we can select all of these other butterflies and then we can control L and copy UV maps. So now all of these will have the same UV map. Let's jump back into the shading tab. And what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate this and we're going to add a mix color. And I'm going to put this color into here, this color into here. And we're going to change this to multiply. Now, what we're going to do is change this texture here. We're going to change this to the texture of our dancing character. And then we're going to change the factor right up to one, just so that it mixes this texture over the top of the color. And don't worry that the color is looking a little bit like this right now. That's not a problem. That's going to be, be fixed shortly. I just want to decrease the specular, increase the roughness. I'm going to plug the result into the subsurface color, and I'm going to increase the subsurface to one. This just allows a little bit of light to pass through those butterfly wings, and make them look a little bit less solid. Now, one thing you do need to remember to do, this is really important, is click on this from instancer tick box. What we need to do is we need to add some lights to this scene. Okay, so. We've added some lights. Now this still looks a little bit garbage. And the reason for this is because you can only do this in cycles. So let's switch over to cycles rendering. So now we can see that all of these particles are inheriting the color from the mesh. So we can see here like the lips and eyes and face and things are kind of like a pinky color and the skirt and the legs and probably even the shoes. Kind of, yeah, you can kind of see like a, kind of a golden color at the shoes. So this is going to be a little bit fuzzy because it's uh, it's rendering real time and that's not really great, but you kind of get the idea. So let's go to, say here, for example, let's render this out. Okay. That's actually looking, looking pretty cool. So let's add a plane. Let's we'll scale this by say five. We'll come and edit this and backdrop. We can just bevel this. I like to make, little backdrops as I'm making things just kind of inspires me a little bit more. Let's try to render that and see what it looks like. We're getting there. We're certainly getting there, but we're not quite finished yet. So what we can do now is we can come back to the particle system and let's just hide that from viewport of them for the minute. 
And what we can do is we can add another particle system. And we're going to do similar kind of stuff. So we'll click on this case while we're here. And uh, just so we don't forget it. Um, number a thousand. We'll start at a thousand and see where we go. Lifetime. We're going to change these to maybe like a hundred. And we'll do frame start negative 100 and 350 for this. And then render, we're going to change this from halo to collection. And so we're going to change that one to energetic. Uh, I'm going to change this to 0.15 like the other one. Physics now, we need to change this to boids. Max airspeed 0.1. Okay, let's just try that again. See, I'm not sure why that's like they're all kind of like spawning over there. So let me just try and do like negative 500 maybe. There we go. So if we render this, we can see here we've got a few butterflies that are kind of breaking off from the pack. Now, I'm not 100% sold on those big butterflies on this, this first particle system. So I'm just going to go back and I'm going to make them smaller again. I'm going to make them... Teeny tiny. Just want to see how that looks like. No, that's too small, that. So maybe 0.1. I think that's a little bit better. Okay. So now what you can do is you can add motion blur as well. Of course, this secondary particle system is completely your choice. It just depends on the overall look that you want it to go for. Now, hopefully you found this useful or interesting or entertaining. And maybe you can find something that you can apply this visual effect to. I'd love to hear about any projects that you create based on this tutorial. That That's just stuff that I thrive on. So if you do, let me know in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, then maybe hit that like button and that subscribe button so you can see more content like this in the future.